This research is focused on study of atoms and molecules in highly excited Redbrook states. Okay, let's start with the basics. The lowest energy state of an atom or a molecule is called the ground state. The ground state is also called the zero energy state. Imagine states being like school grades where U stands for zero school. Atoms or molecules can absorb a photon with specific energy. When this happens, its outermost electron jumps from the ground state to a higher energy level, in the same way as you would jump from a grade U to a grade A if you gained enough knowledge. When the molecule absorbs a photon, the energy that it gains from the photon is related to the frequency at which the photon is travelling at. Describe your progress in school by using grades. We can describe the energy levels in a molecule by using a number called the principal quantum number, N. For the lowest energy state, N equals 1. This state is closest to the nucleus. As N increases, the distance between the nucleus and the energy level also increases. And so does the energy. Energy levels of the helium atom are given by this formula. E is the ionisation energy. R is the Rydberg constant for the given element. Delta is the quantum defect for the given end state. This accounts for the fact that the electrons do not entirely screen the charge of the nucleus. Rydberg state is a state of an atom or a molecule where its outer electron has been excited to an energy level with a very high principal quantum number n. There is a number of properties associated with Rydberg state atoms. For example, Rydberg atoms have a large physical size. For n equals 50, the diameter of an atom would be around 300 nanometers. That's much larger than a normal atom. Rydberg atoms also have long lifetimes. For n equals 50, the lifetime could be in order of milliseconds before decaying back to the ground state. And finally, they have large induced electric dipole moment. The electric dipole moment is simply a measure of the distance between positive and negative charge within the atom, or in our case, its atom's polarity. And when I say large dipole moment, I mean up to 10,000 divide. And if you want to compare, the dipole moment of water in its ground state is about 1.85 divide, and it's normally considered quite large. In order to probe molecules' behaviour in these excited energy states, we must first set up an atomic beam experiment. Here we use helium. <coughs> helium. To do this, first we need to set up a supersonic beam. This just means that the speed of the atoms is greater than the speed of sound. The atoms get fired out and go through a skimmer, which only lets the atoms of certain velocities go through. This is to make sure that the atomic beam is cold enough. The atoms travel at a speed of 2,000 meters per second. This is about 10 times the top speed of a Mercedes. The beam is passed through iron deflection plates. The electrodes excite the ground state helium atoms into highly excited Rydberg states. The electrodes have a uniform electric field. This is so that we can excite the atoms to a particular energy state. The resulting ions are collected on a microchannel plate detector. This diagram shows the energy splittings of a helium atom when it's excited into its Rydberg state. In this case, the electron is in the 50 second shell. As the electric field increases, the energy shifts increase. To describe how helium atoms are affected by external electric fields, we need to introduce small quantum numbers. For example, L is orbital angular momentum quantum number. We can think of N as a shell and L as a subshell for each given value of N. In the absence of external electric fields, states with different values of L are degenerate, which simply means that they all have the same energy. But when external electric field of some strength is applied, the L degeneracy is lifted. So when electric field is applied, each energy level is split into n number of states. We call them Rydberg Stark state. This is a specific example of Stark effect, splitting of spectral lines into several components, named after Mr. Stark. The Stark effect happens due to electric dipole, which is a simple relationship between positive and negative charges within the system. An external electric charge can affect the dipole differently depending on its orientation. This is what the experiment looks like in practice. The atomic beam is generated in a vacuum to avoid collisions with the particles in the air. Helium atoms can be prepared in a given Rydberg state. These can have a large electric dipole moment of up to 10,000 Dubai. This makes these atoms extremely sensitive to electric fields. In Stephen and Valentina's project, they use electric fields of a radio frequency. This allows them to look at the behaviour of helium atoms. Stephen and Valentina found that their experimental results correlated with the predicted theory. This is great because 
It is another example of experimental evidence agreeing with scientific theory. To learn some of the applications of this research project, we spoke to Valentina herself. Well, we find it it's very easy for us to trap and separate and trap these atoms. And uh, this opens uh, very exciting opportunities for uh, quantum computation uh, because all this means is that you could have a circuit um, and then trap atoms above it and then expose the atoms to radiation, which is like a quantum gate. And then after that, you can shift all the atoms to a different part of the circuit and perform other set of uh, quantum gates, which is uh, what lies at the core of a quantum computer. Uh, in other words, these atoms could be the perfect quantum memory. The, the beauty of our experiment is that actually we have the, the best of both worlds, in which one state is very sensitive to electric fields, uh, but we can easily transfer it to a state which is not so sensitive. So now you know about some of the beneficial research going on at UCL, but if you still have any questions about this research or any other research going on at UCL, please follow us on Twitter. <laughs> That's gonna be so cringy. Yes, come on. Ha <laughs> ha